Welcome everyone to today's video about IBESS topic 6.4, acid deposition. Today we're going to learn about acid deposition, which is a form of air pollution that affects soil, water, and living organisms. The first big idea you need to remember is that acid deposition, often called acid rain, even though it's not always rainfall, can impact living systems and our built environment. Acid deposition is mainly caused by the combustion of fossil fuels, such as coal, oil, and gas. When these fuels are burned, they release sulfur dioxide and oxides of nitrogen as primary pollutants. These gases can react with water vapor and other chemicals in the atmosphere to, to form secondary pollutants, such as, such as sulfuric acid and nitric acid. These acids can then fall to the earth as dry deposition such as ash and dry particles, or wet deposition. That's rain and snow. Acid deposition can have harmful effects on the environment, depending on the acidity level and the sensitivity of the ecosystem. There can be both direct and indirect effects on living systems. Direct effects can directly damage aquatic organisms and coniferous forests by lowering the pH of water and soil. For example, fish eggs and larvae may not survive in acidic water, and the needles of con coniferous trees may turn brown and fall off, as you see in this image here. That means that they are not photosynthesizing properly. Indirect toxic effects um, mean that acid deposition can indirectly harm living organisms by increasing the solubility of metals, such as aluminum ions in water and soil. These metals can be toxic to fish and plants, especially in low pH conditions. For example, Aluminum ions can damage the gills of fish and make it so that they have difficulty taking in oxygen. There are also indirect nutrient effects in which acid deposition indirectly affects the growth and survival of plants by leaching away or taking away essential nutrients from the soil, such as calcium and magnesium. These nutrients are important for plant health and productivity especially in acidic soils. Acid deposition isn't just a local problem. It's also a regional and a global one. The impacts of acid deposition may be limited to areas downwind of major industrial regions, but these areas may not be in the same state or even in the same country as the source of emissions. This map here shows the prevailing wind direction in the United States and the concentration of hydrogen ions in precipitation. You'll notice that the heaviest areas are in the northeastern United States, meaning that those pollutants have been carried from the southwest. Sulfur dioxide and oxides of nitrogen that are emitted from coal burning power plants in China can travel all the way across the Pacific Ocean and cause acid rain in North America. To reduce the negative effects of acid deposition, we need to adopt pollution management strategies that involve altering human activity, regulating and monitoring the release of pollutants, and cleaning up and restoring damaged ecosystems. Some examples of these strategies are altering human activities. We can reduce our use of fossil fuels or use alternatives that produce less sulfur dioxide and oxides of nitrogen, such as natural gas, solar power, or wind power. We can also improve our energy efficiency and conservation by using public transportation, carpooling, or biking instead of driving. International agreements and national governments may work to reduce pollutant production by setting emission standards, imposing taxes or fines, or providing incentives or subsidies. We can regulate and monitor the release of pollutants by installing devices that remove sulfur dioxide 
and oxides of nitrogen from coal burning power plants and cars before those pollutants enter the atmosphere. For example, scrubbers like this one, scrubbers like this one uh, can spray a mixture of water and limestone on flue gases to neutralize sulfur dioxide and catalytic converters can convert oxides of nitrogen into nitrogen gas and water vapor. Catalytic converters you find on, on the bottom side of automobiles. Uh, they're made of some very valuable metals and lately they've become the target of many thieves uh, who resell the metals for profit. Uh, we can also try cleaning up and restoring damaged ecosystems as a tier three approach to pollution management. I mean, that means applying measures that counteract the effect of acid deposition in soils, water, and in living organisms. For example, spreading ground limestone in acidified lakes can raise the pH level and restore the balance of minerals. Recolonizing damaged systems with acid tolerant species can also help restore biodiversity and ecosystem functions. To evaluate the effectiveness of these pollution management strategies, uh, we need to consider various factors such as cost benefit analyses, the stakeholder involvement, the available technology, the political will, public awareness, and environmental ethics. We also need to monitor the changes in acid deposition levels over time using indicators such as PA measurements, precipitation chemistry analysis, soil nutrient status assessments, and biological diversity surveys, among other tools. That's all for today's lesson on acid deposition. If you'd like some more resources on ESS Topic 6 or ESS in general, you'll find a lot of those at my website, mrcreamerscience.com. You can also follow me on most of the major social media platforms. Thank you and happy learning.